On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, she's back. We take a look at Ever Given's damage as it's revealed in the dry dock in China. Hi, I'm your host, Sal Mercogliano. I'm the chair of the Department of History, Criminal Justice, and Political Science at Campbell University, former merchant mariner, and an instructor in courses in maritime industry policy, maritime history, and maritime security. Okay, for those of you who have joined me over the past couple of weeks, months, however long you've been with me, first off, welcome. I appreciate every subscriber. We just went over 24,000. Thank you so much. But this whole channel started because back in March of 2021, Motor vessel ever given went aground in the Suez. And I started doing a video every day she was in the Suez. And it, it was what's going on in the Suez. And myself and John Conrad over at G Captain, every day we get on, we bring people on, we talk about what was going on with the ever given in the Suez. And it became kind of a running joke. That was that was the joke. Well, fast forward now to November. Uh, so we're we're talking about eight months later. And now this channel has morphed into what's going on with shipping, where we talk about shipping, you know, at least three to four times a week. But I wanted to come back because we got some great images of the damage that was done to motor vessel ever given. Now, for those of you, just a real quick recap. She went ashore in the Suez in March 23rd, hit the Western Bank, heading northbound in the canal. And then all of a sudden uh, uh, went sideways in the canal. So her bow was rammed into Asia, the Eastern Bank, and her stern was up on the Western Bank, Africa, and she was straddling the Suez. And it took six days to get her out. I'm going to talk about some of the videos I did on that. So if you want to take, go back and take a look at them, you can. But I did an entire video specifically on the grounding, looking at a 2D and a 3D animation and kind of breaking it down. What happened? If you want, I'll link it up right up here so you can go ahead and link to it and I'll have it at the end too so you can find it. But she was stuck in there for six days. And the, one of the big questions we all had was what damage was done to the ship? What physical damage had been done? She'd hit the Eastern Bank at almost 13 knots, which is really fast for in the canal. The canal is about eight to nine knots. And so she hit at 13 knots. That's about 15 miles an hour. It doesn't sound like a lot but she displaces over 250,000 tons of water out of her way. And she hit, now fortunately, most of what is in the Suez is sand. So she wound up hitting on the shallow area of the Suez. And so what I wanna do is look at pictures that have come out on her so that we can basically start getting a, a handle on what exactly happened. Okay, this is the iconic image of Ever Given in the Suez with the digger digging away at the bow there. This is on the Western Bank and them kind of digging away, which was actually had to happen. But the fact that you're seeing the bulbous bow out of the water, remember this ship was fully loaded. She should be down to her trim marks right here. And one of the things to pay attention for right here is a couple of things. Number one, you can see the image of the bulbous bow up here on the bow. That's to give tugs a warning. The circles there with the crosses in them, that's the that's the bow thrusters that are up over here. Notice the kind of the um, uh, the markings on the bow here where she impacted in. So we knew she had taken damage forward. As a matter of fact, John Conrad and I had a report uh, from the company that operated ever given that, that the four peak uh, and the bow thruster rooms had flooded. So this forward area here had flooded, but now we start getting the, the actual images. So this was her leaving, uh, coming in, I, I believe out of Rotterdam was coming out of where she's in a lightly loaded state. You can see how high she is out of the, out of the water at this time, but, but you, you do notice a couple of things right here. Uh, you'll notice number one, that she's got this crack right here. Also notice that she's ejecting water here out of the vessel. She's discharging water out. And, and that's an unusual spot, I will tell you, for a discharge right there, because that would technically be underwater most of the time. So I'm not sure if this was it, it was this something added to discharge water from the forward areas that are potentially flooded. I'm not sure. But that, that's a really interesting question. I just want to throw it out there and maybe someone in our comments would know. But having a, a discharge that far forward, especially under the water line, is, is a bit interesting to me. Coming up here, this is her arriving in the shipyard in uh, uh, Quangdo. This is uh, where she's going to be going into the shipyard. Now, she actually sat out at anchor for quite a long time. She was sitting at anchor. And one of the reasons she was sitting at anchor, I, had, I can't share a picture that I received, 
but they have an entire bow section here that's been prefabbed for her. So they were waiting to get that bow section prefab before they bring her in. So there's no reason to bring her in the dry dock until the exact moment. And what they're going to do is bring her in, cut off the bow section here. And we're going to get closer and take a look here. Uh, cut that section off and put a replacement bow section in there. Because what they want to do is, is very quickly rotate her in and out of the dry dock as soon as they can. So this is a, a better picture of her up along the shipyard here coming in. Uh, you'll notice she's in a very light state. When she left Europe, she came out extremely light. I mean, all the containers were off her. So she's riding really high at this point. She was also constrained in her speed. The American Bureau of, Sh of Shipping which is her classification society, put a speed limit on her, how fast she can steam. And it was right around 11, 12 knots. And when you look at her bow damage, it becomes abundantly clear why that was. And we're going to get some closer looks here at it. So you see her tied up here right now at it. And you can notice the damage kind of here. We're going to get a little closer look right here. There you go. And some scale right there with an individual right there. Assume five and a half, six feet person right there you get this the image here this should be an entire bulbous bow all the way in the water here there's that discharge i was talking about those half moons you kind of see there those half circles right there those are the bow thrusters two bow thrusters and you can see how the the bulbous bow is ripped up along this entire area right here just basically impaled upward where she ran aground also notice a couple of things here the red hull no black marks, no scorching, no, no cracks or anything like that. It's going to be important in later pictures we're going to come to. But you, you'll see right there. So she's going to go into a dry dock. When you go into a dry dock, it's a very sophisticated process. You have to bring her in the dry dock, and you have to put these large wooden blocks underneath the vessel. And you need to make sure those blocks are set in exact areas. Every ship has a dry docking plan where you put the blocks in and you rest the vessel on the blocks. A ship that is damaged creates problems in the dry docking plan because you can't put the blocks under the damaged area for obvious reasons. So you have to worry about stress on the vessel. So very dangerous thing to dry dock a damaged vessel because you may cause more damage to the vessel. Here's Ever Given again. This is her in the dry dock. I'll give you a bit of a picture of the dry dock here in a minute. But the other reason I mentioned this, notice those black marks we were talking about. Let me see if I can zoom in there just a little bit here for you. There you go. So you get a little bit of a better image here of it. You'll see that they put those black marks on here. And one of the things those are going to be doing is look like they're putting in the cuts, cuts to start removing sections. Again, if you come back over to here, that's not there. But what we're seeing here are those cuts being put in. You're getting it on the port side. We don't have them on the starboard side yet, but you'll see here in a minute. And what they're going to do is replace this entire front section here. But it looks like this entire section from basically about here all the way down, probably back to, to the first, second bow thruster. Not sure how far back it goes because I haven't the picture I saw and the images I saw didn't give me enough detailed in, in, information for it. But again, you see how much it's impaled up here. This should be coming out almost parallel here. And you'll notice where, where she's not on, on the blocks right here. That's how much of her bow was squished between her weight forward and Asia, <laughs> the, the sand she hit. So you can see the damage right there. And in this crack right here, goes all the way to that first bow thrust. We've got some better pictures here too. That's kind of a similar picture right there. And that was good. Kind of also that same picture, but a little further away. But uh, here we go. So let's take a look at this picture right here. Let's see if I can zoom in there a little bit for you. Give you a little bit of a better view right here. So this is on the starboard side, on the right side of the vessel, looking at it from the opposite way. You'll notice the crack right here. This looks like that they've started to cut. They're making cuts in here to start removing steel. Uh, it didn't look, and again, we don't have a picture of her on our starboard side. We got ones on a port side, but this crack wasn't there on the start on the port side, probably not there on the starboard side because of all this. This is where they're going to start removing the steel plates and start dismantling the lower section of the bow. Uh, a little bit too much there. Let's go uh, zoom out here a little bit. Yeah, and you can see right here how the steel is bent up. You can see this is supposed to be a full circle, kind of like you see this bow thruster right here. This is a nice big, it's a tunnel basically. You have a big tunnel that goes through the to, to move water from port to starboard. So they're like big fans and they, they jet water from port to starboard. By the way, these bow thrusters useless at the time of the grounding because they were going too fast. Anything over two, three knots, bow thrusters are useless. They never even dropped their anchors because the ship was going too fast. But anyway, this circle should be just like this and you'll notice it's not. 
This is how much of the bow has been impaled upward, thrust upward and created. And matter of fact, one of the things you see here is how the steel is folded over. It's, it's incredible. The amount of force and damage that had to be done to make steel do that is insane. I can't even talk about the forces that are involved there. And these look like they're doing cuts here. If we get a little, think a little bit closer here, you'll see a little bit of the images here. And again, I apologize. These are the pictures I've been able to pull up right there. That's a pretty straight cut right there that you're seeing right there. And this one is actually a little bit better here. Let's go ahead and zoom back out a little bit. I think you get a little bit better view. Yep. A little bit of a better view right here. You can almost see some of the scorching, it looks like right there, where they were doing the cutting right there. But notice as you see how that steel is kind of wrapped around there, almost like in a U, and how this is all folded over and bent in. I mean, it's just, it, it, again, I, I keep saying that word, incredible, but that amount of force that was involved in this crash is crazy. I mean, I mean, it, it just mangled it. And fortunately for everybody involved, only the bow and stern of this vessel ever touched bottom. The middle never did. So the damage is actually very limited. And, and one of the things that they're going to be able to do is, is replace things. This is the stern. So this is the propeller. And one of the things you always notice about ship's propellers are they're not like traditional propellers that you may think of. These are skewed propellers. Propellers are designed for each vessel and designed to get as much, much propulsion and efficiency as they can. So you can see that's that propeller right there. But the thing to look on here is how the, the, the rudder has lost a whole batch of its paint and everything. And that paint indicates it went aground. We knew that the stern was impacted in the mud. And so one of the things when they had to free Ever Given, she was supposedly heading north in the canal. And then all of a sudden she went sideways in the canal. So her bow was like at two o'clock and her stern was at eight o'clock. And this is absolutely useless information to all young people on here who have digital watches. But anyway, she was turned kind of like that. And what they did is to free the stern is they pulled that stern eventually off and got her about to one and seven o'clock. And then they used the engine. They actually used the ship's engine in reverse, which is very inefficient, I have to tell you. It's a very inefficient propeller for, it's designed for efficiency going forward. It's, it's not designed for efficiency going back. But they used the ship's propulsion to pull her off, which is really incredible because this was all encased in mud and you would be really worried about damage to the vessel. But the picture that gets me the most here is this one right here. This is looking up at the bulbous bow and this picture right here. And I put it out on Twitter and, and it's just incredible for a variety of reasons. Number one, you can see all, I mean, where it was impaled because all the paint is off of it and everything, but you can see how the bulbous bow is almost like folded in, upward but notice the crack right here all the way down here to where it's sitting on the blocks and then comes all the way up here this is where the steel was just literally pushed in to the vessel i mean just just like a massive force just pushed upward into the vessel and one of the things that was really a concern during ever given's grounding was all that force pushing up on the vessel was going to crack the bow and, and because you had all that massive weight in the middle and the ship was hanging at its ends, most container ships have, have their, their two full motions on a vessel uh, or, or when they're floating. It's called hogging and sagging. So sagging is exactly what it is. The middle kind of just kind of sags in the middle and the ends are high or, hog, uh, or, or hogging is the exact opposite. The ends are low and the back is high. And most container ships have a hogging motion. They have this natural hogging motion because they have so much weight usually packed in the middle. The ships tend to be a little bit up in the middle and down on the ends. Well, whenever given went up on the Suez on the banks, that kind of straightened her out and that puts a force on her that's not natural. And so there was a big concern about her breaking in breaking in half. And one of the things you see here is people will look at some of these pictures and say, well, you know, it's not that bad. It's, 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 it's could have been worse and it could have been, you know, it's like, ah, you know, we'll cut that bow off and replace it and everything. But this image right here is the scary one. Cause, cause it, when you look at how that steel is folded in there and the damage that was done, wow, that's, that's absolutely incredible. You got to think that they have climbed in and out of this vessel, looked at the frames, the ribs of the vessel, the keel looked at it. And, and obviously this ship was able to absorb most of the damage up forward, which is just incredible. And I, I, I'm really going to be interested to see her come out and get back into service and, and what her response, what her 
availability is going to be. Uh, amazing feat that that vessel was able to survive that much damage. Absolutely just, just incredible. So last thing I want to do is share with you some videos I've done on this. So if you go to my page, my YouTube page, I, I have playlists. And one of the playlists is what's going on in the Suez. And in it, I have a series of videos, 39 videos, I believe it is. Don't last on, I apologize. Yep, 39 videos. Uh, one of them is this kind of overview video, which isn't it. But then the other ones kind of cover the entire event. We have, like I said, we did a daily one on with myself, John Conrad. We brought Nick Sloan on, a salvage master, the guy who salvaged the Costa Concordia. He came on. Uh, we did some other things. We talked about what is an ultra large container vessel. And then when she came free, we did the whole aspect of, of, of freeing her. We talked about container ships and the container ship industry. Some of these videos I've done over again. Uh, we talked about her being arrested for a billion dollars. Uh, we talked about what is going on in shipping, which is basically where that term comes from. You can see it right there. One of my earliest <laughs> episodes right there. But one of the videos I really want to highlight to you is this one right here. Uh, MV Ever Given Grounding 2D, 3D Animation. This is the one I mentioned before, and I'll have it up in the show notes for you. But this is the one where I really break down how she went aground. Uh, I, it's, it's one of my favorite episodes, one of the ones I'm most proud of. Let's put it that way. Uh, I, I like that video a lot. I, 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 I had this movie theme going in initially when I started this whole thing. So, so I, I was linking a lot of my videos to different movie themes. And that one I did, it was to Titanic. And that was the scene where they were running into the iceberg, except in this case, they're running into Africa. So sorry about that. That was me being comedic at the time. I did that. And I have other episodes that did that. But anyway, I like that episode the most. And I'll have it in the very end of the notes here uh, as one of the videos to go see. So I think I think it's a great video. So ever given in the dry dock, uh, be interested to see when those pictures come out, if they cut the bow, if we can get some photos of her getting that new bow on, I'll keep an eye out for them. I've got a friend who's working on it right now. So hopefully I get those, those images. I'll be able to show them with you share them and we can keep talking about ever given because it's the ship that started this whole crazy ride for me so anyway if you enjoyed the video and this one you should have it was a fun video to do uh please subscribe hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos when they come out share it on social media give it a thumbs up leave a comment and i've started a patreon page uh, Patreon has been, you guys have been great to me. I got to do an episode to thank all my Patreon uh, followers, able to get that new microphone for my office at work, working on getting a sound mixer for doing some interviews, got some great interviews lined up. Uh, Brian Boyle, who I just did the video with or, or used his video to talk about what's going on in Savannah. Uh, reached out to me. He wants to do a video together. I'm really excited about that. Uh, get a, a ship's master or ship's uh, merchant mariner on board to talk about what it's like in the shipping perspective. So channel's growing. It's really developing. And I am greatly appreciative of it. And any help you can give is, is always appreciated. It allows me to get new equipment, editing material, and everything I need to, to make this channel more attractive and enjoyable for you, the viewer. So until the next video, this is Sal signing off.